Your country breakfast is ready. Still got lipstick on. Queen of burping, queen of your mom's ass. Hi, chat. Okay, so I have 10 minutes. Too easy. Um, Oh, so let's start off with some one thing. One thing I just realized is that um, in order to... F oh, bitch. Oh, my God. This is so funny. This is the shirt. This is the shirt. Oh. So the shirt was designed by Rosemary. Um, Will Kathleen. Will Rosemary. Will you be marching on us with Sunday? Wait, so Catherine Tate said... Um, Catherine Tate had a bit of called he's a gay man now, which was um, the funny thing about it. So oh, my tattoo is so. Oh, the funny thing about that bit was that, so basically it was a working class family in England, and uh, the son who appears to for all our, for all we can see is straight and he has a brother who's straight and they're just ordinary and regular, and the mom is like um, this like particular kind of like. In America, it'd be like this Jersey trash or like a, a Southie kind of very. It's the Northern Irish Belfast woman who's like the lazy girl for nothing, low life, skiving drunk. Like she's she's at the kitchen table at a working class home and she's just talking shit with her husband who's like doing a model airplane, which is like whatever. And the boy comes in and and she's like, you know, what's wrong with ya? She just always assumes something wrong. He he looks a little bit scared, like he's trying to make a confession. And, um, and she's like, have you been flirting with girls? Have you been vandalizing with boys? Have you been, have you got arrested? And he's like, no. And she's like, what is it? And he's like, I'm a gay man now, mummy. And he's a mama's boy, of course, because it's a mummy. And uh, she's like, you're a what? <laughs> you're a what? And he's like, I'm a gay man now. Like, he's like, he says it again, and he says it very like, I'm a gay man now. Mommy. <laughs> and she says, Are you sure? <laughs> and he's like, I. And the way that he says that, I, is that he's thought about it a long time. He's tried to fix it. He's made his peace with it enough to don't go to his mom, that there's nothing he can do about it. That's the way it is. He's like, Gay man, nai. And she says, Great! I've got a new pencil up skirt. I've got a new pencil up skirt. Oh, what did she say? I got a new pencil skirt upstairs. Let's see if I've. Let's go and see if I've got the hips for it. Let's go and see if I've got the hips for this pencil skirt. I've been, you know. So she right off the bat is like, "Oh my God, we have queer for the straight guy here. This is gonna be amazing." And it's just so fucking funny because his admission of gayness is not is not met with acceptance. <laughs> It's met with this annoying stereotype that he's gonna be this fairy now. And the whole tension of the scene is that he is like, dude, I'm just regular. Just let me be a regular gay guy. It sucks, but it's weird and it's different, but it's okay now. Stop, I don't wanna be, I don't wanna redecorate the house. I don't wanna see the tunnel groove you just had in your bathroom, your friend's bathroom. I don't wanna see if those turnips work with those boots on those thugs that are some, for some reason, who would, you know, 20 years ago would stop by the house to beat me up and now they want fashion advice. The scene is so fucking brilliant and it encapsulates like the problem of Will and Grace or not the problem of Will and Grace, but the Will and Grace world now is that like the ultimate tragedy of, of accepting yourself for who you are is that you're not that special and it's fucking awesome. The only way to not go crazy is to realize that you're another bozo on the bus. And this is hard for gay folks because we are special. This is harder for black folks and for uh, minorities in any particular context. And it can be, it's hard for anybody who has no legs in a room where everybody's got legs. Because that makes you special. And that, for certain activities, means you need to ask for help. You need to be able to ask for help. Help me, I'm dying. Oh, where does it say it? Down here. Yeah, so the show's about a panic attack. The show's about a panic attack. The whole show is about a panic attack. And, um, because it's the only thing that's happened in my life so far that I didn't know what it was. Happened on Drag Race. 
I know it. I mean, I know what Drag Race is. I know what Drag Race is all about. Um, but the only thing that's ever happened in my, in my life, and it happened once, and it happened once on Drag Race, and it's, I I know it's real because I can I can go to court about it. Like I I know somebody was there, but the only person that saw it was me and someone else. It didn't happen on camera. And at the time, I knew it couldn't happen on camera because I didn't know what it was. I thought, wait a minute, is this because I'm lazy? Yes, it is, but that's not the whole story. Is this because I can't think? Is my brain, is my brain stopped thinking? Yes, but that's not the whole story. I could sense that something was going to happen. And at, at the beginning, it felt like, okay, failure, but that's not it. Because I was, it was the Hello Kitty. It was like, hello, I mean, the irony of having a panic attack brought on by Hello Kitty, capitalism, consumerism, I mean, that's me. But it, it was just, 20 years later, it's the most hysterical thing, but in the moment, it was simple. So the, the first thing that happened was, uh, I had to create a character. <laughs> and I'm like, I look at back on this, the only, the only reason to live life is to live long enough to know that you're an idiot. That's literally the only reason. So um, we look back, I was like, we had to create a character. That, now that was the twist. We had to create an outfit, which I can do. Mama, cat suits, leotards, um, gowns, gowns with godets, gowns with a slit, gowns with bell sleeves, gowns with a boat neck, gowns with a plunging neck, gowns with a ruched side, gown, gowns with a, uh, with a gossamer sleeve with a slit that also has a closure on the wrist, gowns with a high neck, gowns with a high neck and a hood, gowns with a high neck and a hood and a ponytail. Gowns with a high neck, a hood, and a ponytail with a braid that goes down and braids into the days. Like, I can do it, any of it. Any of it, any of it, any of it. But not in the time. Uh, oh, sorry. I can do any of that, but not at the same time. Everything takes its own time to do. So in Drag Race, you have a certain amount of time, and you don't know how much time you have. That's why it's hard. If I needed to make a gown out of four-way stretch blue velvet fabric with long sleeves, a boat neck, a slit, and a hem, I, I can do that in, if I have the fabric here, I have the sewing machine, I have the scissors, I have everything I need, and I know how to use the sewing machine, mama, honey, um, one and a half hours. And it'll be stage ready. Simple, you know, obviously, but stage ready. I've done it, I could do it in an hour and a half with adequate food, water, and nutrition, <laughs> and, and sleep, sleep, sleep. Um, no drugs. And then, so anyways, um, long story short, I couldn't do what I needed to do in the time that I had to do it. And that was two mistakes. One, a misjudgment of time, and two, a misjudgment of my ability, and then the wild card was exhaustion. I was done. When, when, the, when Shakespeare or who the fuck ever said, physician, heal thyself, he meant that you know what to do. Now do it. <laughs> so what I did on one layer is eliminated myself from drag race because I refused to believe that I had the ability, the time, or the energy. And some of this, see, this is the problem. I didn't have the energy. I did have the ability and the time, but when one of those pieces of the Holy Trinity was out of whack, it was impossible. So I, I, I greeted, I came up to the limits of my ability to achieve a thing in that moment. I couldn't do it. But then I refused to accept that. And drag is all about failure. All we do is fail. That's the whole point of drag. That's the whole point of drag. It's okay to be gay. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay to be stupid. It's okay to be ugly. It's okay to be fat. It's okay to be until you realize what you have is a symphony of error that altogether sounds sweet. 
that's beside the point. It's not for the mainstream though. Um, and then, oh, it's too, I'm oh, sorry. So I'll continue this later, but um, then I had the panic attack and it was, it was a, it's what, I, I had another one today because we shot this, this, the damn scene, that's a whole other thing. And they suck, they, but it's not real. So I, the, 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 the lesson of the day in the, for a panic attack, not a crisis which involves physical violence or emotional trauma. The crisis of a panic attack is, is it contained? Is it contained? Can you feel those feelings in, a, in a, an environment which allows you to survive? Can you feel those feelings in, a, in, in those sensations and in, in, in experience that experience in an environment which allows your physical body and I'm just gonna say physical body because your brain is your physical body to survive. Right, I mean, it's like when killer comes in, I have one choice, I have two choices, kill or be killed. That's it. Oh, it's like good and evil. That's for the movies, mama. It's never that simple in real life. But a panic attack is an illusion, which is real. Real. The illusion, it's a, it's a perfect illusion. And it's also a perfect delusion, but more on that later. Um, in the meantime, Senator. Oh, the whole point. This, this shit was great today. We did a great job, bye.